Hi everyone, I'm Eric. And I'm Christopher. And we're Grow For Me 5B. Today, we're gonna take you on a full October garden tour. Well, hello everybody. Welcome to our October garden tour. We're really excited to share the garden with you in this video. Full transparency, we have been out of town for at least two weekends in the month of October, and you are really gonna get a chance to see what this garden looks like when we haven't been able to work in it every weekend, when we've had a lot of deer pressure facing us, um, some voles, some chipmunks, some mice, we've got a lot of stuff going on, but things are still looking good. What I want you to think about as we walk through the garden today and you see how much deer damage we we've had or experienced, Take note of what doesn't have deer damage. What haven't the deer attacked? That's a great way. We have been the test garden for what's deer resistant. So we're happy to share that with you. Well, let's start up front in this bed. We have a drift of six wee white invincibles, invincible wee white hydrangeas. These are Annabelle type hydrangeas that bloom on new wood. These were planted two years ago. Um, they're doing very well. As you can see, they have been nibbled by the deer. We've used liquid fence. Liquid fence for us has proven unsuccessful. So we have tried something called, I believe it's either Bobex or Bobex. So we just sprayed that the other night and I think uh, fingers crossed for that. We have some winter gem boxwoods and a drift of Walker's Low Cat Mint underneath our, is this a traditional river birch? It's a heritage, heritage river birch. Heritage river birch. So this is kind of our island in the front of our house. So come on up this way. To my right, you can see the end of our fall containers. The mums are fading out. They fully bloomed out. We have some branches I trimmed off of one of the birch trees stuck in there for some height. These weren't my favorite that I've ever done. I think I, um, I, the mums I chose were too large for this container. And so everything is a little bit off balance, a little bit wonky, but uh, the grasses did great. The ornamental kale and pansies did well. These got smothered a little bit, but they still added some nice fall color. We're gonna take this stuff out and we're gonna put in uh, some evergreen interest for the winter. Um, but yeah, this is just trim branches. I don't know, we tried, we tried. There was a lot going on in October. Our denim and lace Russian sage passed its peak, but still providing structure, still providing scent when you walk by to enter the home. And we'll leave this up all winter because what'll happen is our snowplow guy will need this to know like, what to shovel, what not to shovel. Right, Christopher? Yes. All right. Winter Gem Boxwood, beautifully sculpted every year by Christopher. Thank this is, you. He's kind Thank of you. the boxwood person who does all the boxwood pruning. It could probably use a little trim going into the winter, but eh. why risk it? Why risk it? Yeah. Um, dried corn stalks. And then this is Christopher's update on his uh, ooky spooky Halloween container. Christopher, if you want to tell him about it. I love this container. I've never used orange or yellow mums. And then uh, combining that with a little black pearl hookara, some wire vine down underneath, and some of the branches we cut from the Diana contorted larch. But then look what we just found. We have a little friend here who is munching away. This is the biggest praying mantis I have ever seen. Eric, if you notice, it is munching on the mum. That's well, interesting that it's munching on the mum. See that? Isn't that cool? I would, there's maybe a critter in there that, it, I, do they eat the plants? I don't know. I, I mean, don't they know. They can eat whatever they want. They're awesome. Um, and then this is our columnar juniper here that we keep pretty well pruned to keep its size checked so that it's not encroaching too much on the sidewalk. I've got to go ahead and prune it right here though, because it's starting to go onto the sidewalk for the winter. Our containers on the front porch are fading away. We have some coleus and begonias and asparagus fern in there. If we kind of scooch right in front here, Christopher, we've got more Invincible Wee Whites. They're a champion for us. We keep them in full sun. They only get about one to two feet tall and wide. This is a drift of four of them, underplanted with some Artist Blue Ageratum, which is an annual from Proven Winners. These are a must repeat, must have in your garden. Great pairing with anything. I mean, we could plant them with anything and I think they look great. 
What I love so much about them is how tidy they are. We've done super tunias up here before. And, you know, super tunias, they just kind of sprawl a little bit. And these, just until the last couple of weeks as it got colder, really stay in a nice little clump. Blue kazoo spireas that are starting to turn their fall color. Um, is my shadow pretty bad there or is that okay? Yeah, it's All pretty right. bad. I'll stand on the other side of it. But that, it's always got that iridescent color, but this time of year it takes on more of the reddish hue. So beautiful. Yeah, and behind that you'll see in our window, uh, our baby girl, Freya. She's uh, admiring something on the wall. Hopefully it's not a ghost. Halloween is just around the corner. <laughs> Hopefully it's just light There reflecting. she is. Yeah. She's so sweet. We have winter gem boxwoods underneath so that we can cover up a little bit of the foundation. We have contemplated putting a window box under that window. What do you guys think? I'm pro window box, Christopher's anti window box. Let me back up all the way. Christopher, explain why you're anti window box. So I'm box. anti window box only because I feel like it might look messy. It would really depend on what we put in it and what kind of window box we got. I think simple, clean, black window box with like super drought tolerant annuals in it because it's full sun facing south. Oh, I'd it. run drip into it. Yeah, but still. Um, in front of the winter gem boxes, we have our hedge of invincible spirit, two hydrangeas nibbled upon by, upon by the deer. But make note that the firelight tidbit hydrangeas right in front of them, which get about three by three, fantastic fall color, have not been nibbled upon by the deer, nor have the blue kazoo spireas. Coming along this way under the tricolor beach, we have some Vanessa Bell roses in bloom. Fall is a great time for roses. If you've ever wanted to plant something for fall, roses are perfect. We've got more on the way if now that they've been sprayed, again, hopefully these will bloom because you can see some of the other ones have been nibbled off. And we tend to always underplant our roses with Walker's Willow Catmint. So. All right, so we have the vanilla strawberry hydrangea that has done beautifully for us. This has been in its position for a couple years now. I think since our first year. At Was least, it our first it's year? It's at least four seasons in. Okay, well, you can see just by the trunks, this is a really substantial shrub and it's holding very well. We've had some, you know, some rain and everything, but it really didn't flop that terribly considering how big these flower heads get. Which I'm eating a flower. <laughs> <laughs> Um, as we move around, there's another blue kazoo spirea. This is a Olympia clematis that we got at Trader Joe's. And we wanted to tie this bed into the front bed. Yeah. So there's some repetition. Some repetition here. But this is cool. It gets the beautiful purple flowers on it and a little fall color. So that's nice. This is a firelight tidbit that you guys may have seen us transplant. And it was a really hot day and it was a terrible time to transplant. But it's alive. Yeah, it's making it. It's going to make it. It'll be all right next year. And if it's not, that is the beauty of gardening. If things don't make it, you just get something new. Um, Eric, as you back up, you can show them the really cool. What is this? Look at this. How big this is. This is the pompous grass that I can't wait to cut these. And I'm going to do this trick I saw on Instagram with a blow dryer and it makes it into this big poof and it's great for holiday decorating. I can't we'll believe how big that pompous grass it is. It is so gigantic. And this is a Hetsy columnar juniper. That yep, same plant that's up by our front door. Yes, it had its leader snap in a ice last storm year, last yeah. year. So this is a leaderless juniper right now. It'll probably establish one of these as its leader. But in the meantime, it's kind of cool to see it so wild. Um, this is a spilled wine wygilla. Originally, we had a whole bunch of spilled wine wygilla up in the foundation bed. But now we just have the one. And this is a great little accent foliage. Here we have a doing very well Thin Man Arborvite. Thin Man Arborvite. I don't know. I was going to call it Tiny Tim for some reason. Oh. So this is great. This will stay nice and tiny, shoot straight up and give us a little mixture of evergreen as we're trying to create a border from the, yeah, the main road down there. Yeah, not stellar view behind me. Uh, Spring Grove Arborvite, which is also done excellent. This was something, did we get this at the end of last season? This was planted at the beginning of this season. I don't remember any of this stuff. I can remember names, but not when we planted things. But this has done really well. This will get pretty substantial. And it'll probably get substantial very quickly too, based mm -hmm. on how much it did in just one season. I think it probably was about here, maybe? At most. Yeah, it I was I mean, great. it's grown more than a, 
probably two feet this yeah. way. Yeah, a borrowed landscape. There's a little burning bush in the neighbor's yard. Come on over this way. Yeah, it grubs real bad. <laughs> <laughs> Blue Point Juniper. This was planted in the heat of the summer, but it didn't skip a beat. It actually put on a little growth since we did that, which is really nice to see. This will be great as an anchor with its matching friend at the other side of the fence line. All right, now we're entering the shade where I'll be able to not squint so much. Um, the pink Gatsby hydrangea is taking on the exquisite oak leaf fall color. It is This isn't stunning. as red as it's been in the past, but oh. I've noticed in a lot of the um, foliage around here, things aren't getting as red this year. There's more yellows and oranges in the trees because normally this would get more of this red. It might still be coming. Maybe it is coming. It's just starting because there is some of the inner leaves. Oh, maybe. Yeah. That would be really nice. Um, the Roseanne geraniums that had got divided this past year did fantastic. They rebounded well. We have a plan for this moss area to I not... I know. We just totally slacked off on the moss. Once the weeds started growing, we were just like... Done. No more. So we're probably going to replace this moss with something that's um, still walkable but we're going to put some stones through it just keep it very and the clean. reason we have this here is so that you can get to the hose beautiful um here we have a let's dance sky view hydrangea that was newly planted this year blooming very nicely it hasn't done much of a blue for us this year um, because it probably had most of those blooms set already um, but we're going to keep acidifying it and it'll hopefully give us the sky blue flowers and here is teasing georgia David Austin climbing rose that has done <laughs> insanely well. Clearly because the five foot Essex trellis that we have on it is swallowed whole. It is completely swallowed whole. And we have not maintained it. We have not trained it. We have not tended to it like yeah. we should have. We are fully aware. <laughs> but you know what? I think it's crazy and fun. I like it. It'll be nice to tame it, but it's also kind of fun to see it goes so big this is um a really great success eric earlier in the season took these three checkmark trilogy wygillas yes wygilla i was going to say spirea all the way to the ground they had grown very strangely in the can they had a lot of crossing branches once he cut them down they flushed back from the ground this much in one year nice strong stems and they are just a beautiful shape big i really success. like them Oh, and we have down here a lemon coral sedum, which is an annual for us. But we're going to leave it in the ground and see if it comes back. Uh, this is a columnar scotch pine. This is full width. Full width. It should just get taller. Just get taller now. It That would be the hope. Let's hope that it doesn't just revert and change its mind. Here's a lovely lime Ricky hydrangea with some new and faded blooms on it. And, and few... let's just review deer damage. Now the back of this viburnum is where the real good color is. Let's wiggle a foot in here. Look at how good the color of Brandywine viburnum is. Amazing. So beautiful. Love that. It's got the berries. They were by color at one point and they seem to be gone now they are gone there's some back there but they turned all blue after a while that's fine i wonder if the deer ate the berries oh maybe they did eat the bear oh you know what they did eat the berries oh they well, didn't eat the plant but they ate the berries great i mean that's what they're there for yeah. i'm not gonna eat them yeah I'm not, no <laughs> um, <laughs> spearmint um coral bells down here these have been in the ground for quite a while. I think next year they're going to need some dividing. They've gotten a little bit funky looking, um, but they come back probably the most reliably of all of the coral bells for us. This is a light O'Day hydrangea. This is definitely not something to put in your garden if you have a lot of deer pressure, um, but the beautiful variegated foliage more than makes up for it if you don't get blooms. I think this is one of the most beautiful plants in our garden, just for that reason. It is beautiful. And it did not bloom at all for us this beautiful, year. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, look beautiful. at that variegation. So pretty. It almost looks like a variegated poinsettia. Oh, yeah. Actually, correct me if I'm wrong. I feel like poinsettias and hydrangeas are in the same family. Ooh. Type that in the comments if you have some knowledge on that for us. Um, this is our 
dappled willow that I do the pollarding on where I cut it into tree form basically. And I believe the reason it's called pollarding is when you are maintaining the same spot every year. So I'll be coming in and doing my trimming and everything on this soon enough. Um, but this is a Pinocchi Cypress, which is not trained on anything. We're just letting it do whatever it wants. And it's a fun little evergreen accent. Yeah. Look at that fall color on the limelight prime hydrangea. Yeah. To my left is our hydrangea room, which we installed. Love it so much. We have since put away the Adirondack chairs that were there as we're starting to put stuff away as winter's coming. Um, but we'll get to that variety in a sec. Actually, no. On the front edge here, I can tell you that there are three Invincible Rubies that seem to be a big favorite of the deer. They really seem to like them. Um, and the Sublimes and Incrediballs, I must have sprayed just the right amount of uh, liquid fence on them to deter or maybe they didn't have fresh enough blooms. Maybe that's what it was. That could have been it. Um, our Royal Frost Birch. I'm an absolute fan of this tree. I love it so much. It's gorgeous and humongous and beautiful. And we can see it from our great room window to admire the bark all winter. So, Chris, if you come through here, we threw some additional stones in the grass to add a little, to make it a little more substantial. Underneath our pollarded willow is some one of our shade beds. We have some hellebore in there, Virginia. Look at our Brunera is a hot mess. It's looking something real weird is going on with that. Now I will tell you, Eric, <laughs> that is a different variety than this one. It is. One of them is proven winners and one of them isn't. And if I had to guess, I guess the one that looks great is proven winners. And the one that looks a little bit icky is not, but that's just a guess. I don't know that for sure. Um, coming up along this edge is a small drift of Invincible Ruby. Again, another favorite of the deer as they came prancing through our garden. Winecraft Gold Smokebush. It's turning green in the fall. It's looking beautiful. Our Aphrodite Sweet Shrub is glorious. This is a uh, great Jurassic Park type uh, yeah, a shrub to add in. It blooms purpley red throughout the spring and summer. This will probably cut back to the ground in the spring and let it refresh, reflush fresh growth, only to size control it because it's. Eric, can I just compliment us on our ground cover game in this area? Yeah, I love our ground cover game. The Lamium is looking the best it's looked in years. The lemon coral sedum, the coral bells are looking great. Christopher's a coral bell pusher. Invincible Spirit, two hydrangeas. You can see we have some fresh blooms on top. Clearly, uh, the deer didn't choose those to snack on. And some Invincible Spirit, two dried blooms down below, which I could harvest, but they're looking a little past their prime. And frankly, they've been sprayed with so much deer spray that I think if we brought them inside, we would not enjoy No, that, that wouldn't be so But good. Christopher, let's go right behind you and talk about our hydrangea room. Here we have our smattering of stones for our two Adirondack chairs. This is set up as incredible white, incredible blush alternating across the front. And then in the back is Invincible Sublime and Invincible Lace alternating in the back. And we did a whole video about this. I'm sure Christopher can link it below um, about setting up this hydrangea room. So ideally next year, We'll have behind Christopher right now, Invincible Ruby and Invincible Spirit 2 and Bobo's. And then behind here, that beautiful hedge of that mixed border of hydrangeas. I'm really excited about that. Hmm. I'll keep going this way. What do you think? Yeah, I like this direction. On our trellis, um, which is attached by those hooks at the top of the vinyl fence. So many people ask, you about, ask us about those hooks. So we finally went ahead and put them in our Amazon store. So I'm sure they can be linked below, right, Christopher? Yes, I can. Okay. On that is our Kinsley Ghost Honeysuckle. That was planted as a court-sized plant back in the day. So this is probably year three for it, right? Mm -hmm. it's, it's doing, doing very quite well. well. Winecraft Black Smoke Bush, way taller than expected. But I did just recently hear they've been reclassified or resized All by right. proven winners to be an eight to 10 foot tall and wide. Wow. I mean, that foliage is absolutely fantastic. I'll take more of it. Uh, down front, a Mugo pine, some peach berry ice coral bells. 
We've cut back a lot of the perennials in here. We took our annuals out of this Campania container. This is the Litchfield container from Campania. Um, back there is the Heaven Sent Jacob's Ladder. Uh, in the spring, when it flushes out, it's a very blue foliage, but it's much greener towards the end of the season as the temperatures warm. This is a Creeping Veronica ground cover. Sprinter Boxwood, our Eastern Red Bud, has dropped most of its leaves. Underneath that is our Mill on the Floss Rose, which has a bud coming, and maybe now that I've sprayed it, it'll bloom. Yes, you that can would be great. See some defoliation. <laughs> Some deer foliation. Deer foliation. Bobo hydrangeas flanking the arch. This is the Gothic arch from Gardner's Supply Company. Love it. Growing on it is a Betty Corning clematis and generous Gardner rose, which has reached the top. It reached the top in one season. One season. We planted these last year as bare root. As bare root roses, ordered directly from David Austin Roses. So, big fan. Another Hetsy columnar Juniper. We've let this one get a little more free with its shape and size uh, than the one in front. And then hanging in that little window above Aphrodite Sweet Shrub are still surefire white begonias going strong with some Wicked Witch Coleus inside. All right, so Eric, as we come through the Gothic arch, we'll stay over here on the east side of the house. We have an Autumn Joy Sedum that is past its prime. Of course, they're always really beautiful in autumn. This one got a little bit too much water this season, and therefore it did the split. Our others down the way, they don't have the drip directly on them, so you'll notice they stayed a little shorter and more compact. Um, what I could do too is a Chelsea chop in May when they do start to grow, and that'll make them branch a little denser. So I think I might do that with this one next year to keep it from splitting. Oh my gosh, sorry to interrupt, but we have red bud blooms happening. Why is that happening? Nature is confused. I don't, oh, wait, it's not focused. This square Essex trellis, we have Gertrude Jekyll, we have Mary Rose, and we have James L. Austin. These are also David Austin roses. Can I just correct you and let you know it's Gertrude Jekyll? I keep saying Jekyll. What's wrong with me? I don't know. It's the I'm sun. It's actually the sun. embarrassed for I you. I should put a hat on. <laughs> I need, maybe that's what it's the sun. I think you should go put a hat on and we'll continue the tour. All right. My upstate of mine hat is now on and we can continue. This we can tour. continue. We can continue. <laughs> Tough stuff, top fun. This was an extra hydrangea we had from a little hedge. We'll show you in a little bit. It gets a little bit of fall color. We're very excited to see how it does. Behind that are some Macrophylla hydrangeas, Seaside Serenade Cape Lookout. And we were on the lookout for some blooms that may not happen now because there was some snacking. It looks like they got snacked upon, so yeah. we'll see. At least the foliage is pretty. Right. Then we have Gertrude Jekyll and Mary. We have David or El, David James L. Austin from David Austin. It's Gertrude Rose. Jekyll. I said Gertrude Jekyll. Rewind the tape. Right. Then we have Gertrude Jekyll and Mary. Tape. We have David. Oh no. <laughs> All right. Let's continue. Come on down here. The gold cone juniper looking great. Wine and roses Wygela. On this border, we repeat quickfire hydrangea, pink, pinky winky hydrangea, quickfire. Throw in our lovely emerald green arborvitae, which is looking so good. We thought we lost one of these last year and it rebounded beautifully. Um, in between that are some perennials. We have, unfortunately, not a perennial for us, Verbena benariensis, but I didn't plant any of these. This is, this is all reseeded from last year. Um, we also have some reseeded Nicotiana that I haven't planted in three years. Yeah, Nicotiana pops up every they once in a while. They just pop up every once in a while. The beautiful Tromner spruce. Yeah, let me get back so we can see the shape on this. It's great because it's a blue spruce crossed with a Serbian spruce. So you get that kind of rigidness of the Serbian with the color of the blue. This does absolutely incredibly well and it grows fast that top pointy spire is this year's growth we just transplanted Roald Dahl David Austin Rose next to the dwarf pink bloomerang lilac which has put on little bits of pink a couple years from now I'm sure it'll be charged up enough to keep reblooming. the repetition again of the hydrangeas quick fire 
pinky winky and quick fire again. Ooh, the breeze is really showing off that grass. It is breezing right now. And this <laughs> is a north wind panicum. So if we're having breezy microphone moments, apologies for that. Take that in. Wow. Let's just admire that grass for a moment. Wow. This is why you plant grasses in your garden. This is why you plant grasses, especially big, tall, giant ones. Yeah, it's gorgeous. Love this. This Sting Arborvitae. Got a little burn on there. It had been protected um, and then that got exposed. And I have to admit, I don't think we uh, kept up on watering as well as we should have. No, but there is some drip next to it. It's, I think it'll be okay. It'll it be okay. it did not get nibbled on. I do see some hooves. And those hooves went right here for Crown Princess Margareta, David Austin Rose. We also have a birch tree trio back here. Very small right now. Mm -hmm. Next to the lemony lace elderberry that has shown off like nobody's business. Yeah. Also nibbled. Really? The lemony lace got nibbled? Yeah. Do you All see right. That? Make note, people who uh, need deer resistant shrubs. Yes. All right. Lickfield Angel, the front got nibbled, but they couldn't reach this bloom. <laughs> wow. Let's zoom in on the one Lickfield Angel bloom. A little bit past its prime. They get so kind pretty. of an almondy color. I really like that. Really, really nice. This rattling group of perennials here are the uh, very cool uh, Baptisia. Oh, they've opened up already, so they won't rattle for us anymore. Um, that is a Cinderella milkweed sending out all of its lovely seeds to the land. Some bee balm that's gone to seed. That'll all stay up. There's a Dwarf King birch back there. And I don't know if we've ever even shown this. I don't know. It's so hidden. I have to say the lighting in this video is going to be bonkers. It's in, it's, it's like... out, it's wind. <laughs> It's so a little, apologies. <laughs> yeah, but I don't even know if you can get in there. That I yellow. I think we can see it. Yeah, that it's yellow. It's called Dwarf King Birch. And it's more of a shrubby birch tree. Mm -hmm. And hopefully it fills in a little bit more because it is going to be a really nice texture. This Pinky Winky looks fantastic. Oh, I'm in the middle of this mulch again. I do that. I step in the mulch all the time in leaf footprints. Um, these are the remnants of our trio of hibiscus underneath the bald cypress. We limbed this up earlier in the season, and I think it grew since then. It's great. I love this tree. After a few years of not doing too much, the winterberry back here, this is winter red winterberry. This is gorgeous. And it's really funny because when we first started gardening, we always had nicknames for little plants. And Christopher called this the lady in red shrub. And for some reason in my mind, I was just like, oh, it's the lady in red winterberry. And I would go to the garden center and be like, what's the cross pollinator for the lady in red winterberry? And they had no <laughs> idea what I was talking about. And Jim Dandy that we pollinate her with is over on the other side behind that milkweed. This is a Henry's Garnet Sweet Spire that should be a beautiful red color, but it didn't get enough sun this year due to the bald cypress. Mm. So this is a little different view than we've ever given yeah, everybody. Yeah, let's give a little view up here on the hill. So the berm, of course, is, you know, it's the back of the property. And I just came through and mowed it. This is an apple tree, believe it or not. I don't think we got any apples on it this yeah, year. Yeah, we don't really tend to our apple trees back here. No, that is a lilac that came from Costco years ago. We thought it died and then it started growing in that spot. So now we're going to let it do its thing. We threw some raspberries back there too. But yeah, look at, there's woods behind us. It drops down really far to a stream. Yep. And this and is where those deer come from. Yep. Once in a while, you can hear them running. Ah, I'm getting attacked by the apple tree. This is our catalpa tree. Let me get some better lighting. Catalpa tree. Oh, look, this actually got nibbled too. Wow. This catalpa tree was $5 at Home Depot. We put it in the ground. We didn't water it. We didn't do anything. And it quadrupled in one season. So native catalpa trees are for the win. 
Yeah, and here's a view of our garden that we don't normally show. This is a cabaret grass right in front of us. It's a miscanthus that has really cool margins on it, really bold stripes. Um, it didn't do very well. So this is all that it did this year. We only got two little tufts on it. Hmm. Interesting. I wonder why. But yeah, maybe we should head back around front. What do you think? Yeah, let's go back around front. Look at the quince. Double take orange quince. The double take orange quince is deer resistant, blooms a beautiful color. I love it. One of my top favorite shrubs for spring interest in the garden. This right here is river birch. We're going to prune this up. We're going to clean it up quite a bit this winter, not in spring because that's when the sap is flowing. But as soon as the leaves fall is when we'll probably start pruning it up. So here we have our repeating green giant arborvitaes across the back. These were planted probably as five gallons four years ago, three years ago. They've done very well. Our butterfly bush, our lone singular butterfly bush to have survived this past winter uh, was planted as a little quart size. It's like raspberry rush, I think it's called. Hot buzz. Hot buzz. Uh, a blue stem showing off some of its fall color. Our transplanted limelight prime, which is uh, dried up, but we'll be fine. It'll rebound next season. Um, this grass, morning light miscanthus, stunning this time of year. Absolutely love it. And Christopher, if you want to just scan right here really quick, our Princeton Century Ginkgo has dropped its leaves. Yeah, that they just Very all came quickly. down at once. Beautiful yellow color for one day. Yeah. <laughs> A hedge of spirea underneath. I believe this is double play Big Bang, right? Big Bang. Good job. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Another little Mugo pine. Our red obelisk beech, which turns green in the fall. This right here is candy corn spirea, which has the yellow foliage against this beautiful burgundy foliage of opening day by Burnham. It's beautiful. It's so clean and neat and just gorgeous. It's a great looking viburnum. Didn't bloom for us this year, though, because of our late frost. And it looks also like it is deer resistant. <laughs> Adagio grass. The seed heads are fully starting to open. Uh, little limes underneath in front. This is a sonic pink, right? Yes. Sonic bloom pink or sonic, sonic pink? bloom pink. Uh, Yjila. We had removed something from here in one of our videos. I can't remember. That was a milkweed. Oh yeah, it was humongous because we wanted to let our black lace elderberry grow, which is definitely getting snacked upon. So not deer resistant, making note. Mm -hmm. Moving this way. We have a little landscape rose. This is double up pink, right? I believe it's double up pink. And it's pink. covered in buds. So we might get some blooms before the end of the season. And there are also some rose hips on it. Right here is storm cloud Amsonia. This is a superstar all season long. Comes up looking like asparagus. Has beautiful olive green foliage and bright blue flowers. And then it just kind of fills this space. And now we've got great fall color. Another beautiful grass happening right here. Our iris is still uh, green and going strong, which is strange. I was I had to cut everything else back. Yeah. Um, tough stuff hydrangeas. They look like they are deer resistant, so that's great. Or at least deer don't prefer them when they have thousands of other delicious things to eat in our garden. Uh, on this tutor, we have a clematis that seems to have done something. It's it like browned out and yeah turned to ick it just turned to ick there's know. not really room for it anymore in that spot so i think one way or the other it was gonna have to move yeah so that's fine that's fine pinky winky hydrangea we have some huskers red in here another hearty hibiscus uh this is one of my favorite trees in our garden it's a grouping of a river birch and another one of my favorite trees christopher right here is our paper bark maple which has great fall color but look at that bark. The cinnamon peeling bark <clears throat> is so pretty. I love it. Uh, black cat pussy willow. Love that shape. So nice and tidy. That is, if you pan this way, the berm. Look at that. Fall oh. light. The other star of the garden 
will always be our limelight hedge. It looks fantastic this time of year with the more dusty pink color it gets. And then some new blooms, which is really quite crazy to see. As this um, gets through its fall color and the leaves drop, we're gonna go ahead, remove all of these leaves because we had that mite issue this year. And that will hopefully remove any leftover eggs or larva or whatever creepy crawlies are in there. Um, and that'll be good to have this nice and full again next year. Normally we would leave the leaves in the bed to act as mulch and add nutrients as they decompose, but not this year. We did have a really great comment from one of you guys that you use your limelight and hydra other hydrangea blooms to mulch plants in. Take a bunch of the blooms and just kind of tuck them in at the base of plants. Well, that's interesting. I thought that's that a might, good idea. That might be something I do with the roses because in the past I've just taken a bunch of compost and dumped them there. But if I took a cluster of these and just kind of mush them in around the base of the roses, that could be a beautiful little way to do it. This is a Wollerton Old Hall climbing rose that did beautifully, it came from Heirloom Roses. They send out really, really nice stuff. I have this thought about training this horizontally along this fence, maybe putting um, horizontal wire for it to grow on or just adding trellises like we have on the other side so we can train it into like maybe four or five beautiful horizontal um, canes. What do you think about that, Eric? I think that sounds like an interesting idea. All right. So we're moving on down here past our lovely shedding Vanderwolf pine. I know. I, I know. love that tree too, the Vanderwolf pine. I get such a kick out of this. I don't know why. I think it's so funny that they kind of molt every year like they're chickens. Yeah, that's probably a great thing to use as mulch too, are these pine needles. Let me get to this side because the lighting's better. It was backlit before. Yeah, isn't that great? Yeah, we could definitely use some of these. If you back up a little bit further, don't trip. I'll try not to. I know there's a magnolia behind me somewhere. Oh, you're doing good. Keep going, keep going. We're going to look at that magnolia next. Well, what about our juniper? Well, this is the matching juniper. Oh, from the other side. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Um, this is a Jane magnolia. We're going to let it bloom and do its beautiful, beautiful show. And then these lower branches are going. I yeah, have, we're going to turn it into a tri-trunk. Yeah, we need to turn this into a tri-trunk for a couple reasons. One, I love the look. I think it looks great when it's more of a tree form. But also, this bed is too big. It's It does not need to be six feet across for purposes of weeding and mowing. And we keep making it bigger because we can't mow around it with all of these lower branches. So they're going to go and we're going to let this go sky high. We'll see how that goes. Great. There's our repeated ageratum. Yes, repeating the ageratum and the winter gem boxwood, the Walker's Low Cat Mint, and all of that is framing out these Gabriel Oak roses that we have on this plant support. One last Gabriel Oak. Oh, Ooh. there is a Gabriel Oak in there. <sighs> so beautiful. It is a very, very blustery day. It I reminds love it though. You it's know, like I... our last week. So we're supposed to get a frost tomorrow. Like this is our last. Yeah. Above 50 day for the whole like year, I bet. Right. And we are one month past our average first yeah, frost date. Yeah, it's coming tomorrow. And we still haven't had one. So we're going from 71 as a high today to like 40 something as a high tomorrow. So that's what all the wind is about. And yes. obviously the wind is blowing the clouds across. So that's the lighting and wind. So right. thanks for your patience. And you know how I love a good children's reference in the garden? Winnie the Pooh and the very blustery day. That's where I'm at. These are some more tidbits. I don't even know. These firelight tidbits are so great. I love these hydrangeas. And a piglet grass, which is similar to Hamelin. I believe it's the tiniest bit smaller than a Hamelin grass when you have piglet. Weeping Norway spruce. My plan is to train this to 12 feet tall, then unstake it and let it go. All right. I think that's, I want to see how tall I can get it and then let it do its thing. All right, we have Dowick Purple. This is another pillar-shaped beach. It's more of a purple beach, and they go to a bronzy green color for their fall color. This is Liatris that, that we're leaving up. 
because it's got these fun little seed heads. We've seen some birdies eating on those. I will not fall in the wind or in the egress. Some more Baptisia that was very young, so it didn't get its rattles. A Ember Waves Western Arborvitae. This is going to get pretty big, so we'll lose some of the stuff down here eventually. But this golden color is going to really give a beautiful yeah. winter interest. And we needed the golden color on this side of the house. We just didn't have anything chartreuse, and we needed the weight of the evergreens. So. so in front of the Ember Waves, we have a purple Chablis Liatris. Right? Lamium. Not Liatris. Lamium. Lamium. We have one of our lilacs, which you can see is budded up next year for its spring blooms already. A Neptune Catmint. This is a purple fountain grass, which is an annual for us. You can see the difference in uh, size between this one and the one in the front yard. The one in the front yard faces south, gets sun all day. This is the west side of the house, so it gets sun uh, from about noon on. So that's difference in lighting, difference in size. Blue feather, bald cypress, not bald cypress, blue feather juniper, right? Hinoki cypress. Hinoki cypress. Some sedum, more verbena. There's a wine and roses vigila back there. This is Emily Bronte rose. This has been, had a rough year. Uh, it was crushed earlier in the year by a uh, Thumbergia, and now it's being eaten by the deer. Here's our trio of arborvitaes we planted. A lot of people commented and said, no, those will definitely make it. Just prune off that dead growth uh, before the spring. Maybe we'll leave it for protection. Maybe we'll get in there and prune it off. But it'll definitely come off either this season or in the spring before new growth comes on it. So thanks for that tip. Our Parkland Pillar Birch turning beautiful yellow this fall underplanted with an arctic red dogwood our trio of pufferfish hydrangeas that we planted one of them getting snacked upon the other two not so apparently you have a 33 percent chance of your pufferfish mm -hmm. hydrangeas being eaten by deer happy to uh take the gamble for you guys this is a carolina sweetheart red bud cat mint and another uh boxwood to kind of flank off the hedge. Christopher, should I keep going straight or go to the right? Let's just finish this shady All right. area. This, I think, is more what we're going to do up in the front where that um, moss is. Just some stepping stones to our hose. This is a spilled wine Wygela. These are some sedum that need to be put in the ground. Morning Light Miscanthus getting a lot of shade, but doing very well. Yeah, it's doing surprisingly so who would have well thought for the spot. That morning light miscanthus could be like a part shade grass. Yeah. I mean, for us in zone five, it seems to be working for us. These are our uh, North Pole Arborvitaes we got on clearance that we're going to put in some containers. They're starting to brown a little, which concerns me that maybe they weren't taken care of the best at the garden center. So we're going to have to keep them pretty well watered. Our Gatsby Moon Oak Leaf Hydrangeas are turning color back there. We just cut back our Sun King Aurelia. The uh, Meadow Rue has been cut back. There are some Hellebore in there. Our Brunnera is here doing pretty well. The Hassas have been cut back. Um, and those of you might remember that we had a little bit of leaf spot fungus on our maple. So when these leaves fall, be sure to clean them out. And then right behind me is our Apple Blossom Double Up Begonia. Double delight. Apple Double blossom. delight. Um, and it was a delight for the deer. We had some over here. And when I came out one morning, it was like it was gone. They ate the double delight apple blossom begonias to the to the soil. Yeah, you could so, not see anything. It was kind of soil. funny. I was like, well, at least they enjoyed it because we were going to toss it anyway for the season. Um, our beds have been pretty much cleaned out. We are going to we're not rearranging them, but we're going to like spread them out a little bit because this was our first full growing season in them. And we realized that we need a little more space between them than we thought at first. So they are going to be spread out a bit more. These elevated beds are from Gardener's Supply. The arches are sold separately, um, but they've been excellent for us so far. So I'd highly recommend them. I'm sure Christopher can put a link down in the bottom are underneath the video. I sure cafe will. lights are from Amazon. A lot of people ask that. And yeah. they're just cafe lights from Amazon. 
So this is pretty much done for the season. I think we're going to leave the strawberries and see if they overwinter. That would be nice if they overwintered. Yeah. Oh, our autumn crocus is up. What? We planted autumn crocus and the foliage is up. Oh, but I don't see a bud. Yeah. So between this is the blue mohawk juncus grass from Proven Winners, which they sell as an annual grass. But for us, it's hardy. I planted 25 autumn crocus bulbs and I see quite a few little grassy bits down there. Yeah, that's great. I've got this secret plan that we're going to grow a lot of it and give saffron as Christmas presents. <laughs> exactly. Little lime punch hydrangeas right here. Definitely eaten by the deer. So that's something interesting. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't have thought that they would have been eaten by the deer as a panicle, but Right, because they didn't go after any other panicles. Luckily, they bloom on new wood. Our Diana contorted larch is starting to turn yellow. It turns bright yellow in the fall. Uh, our underplanted that. This is where we transplanted those pink potion salvias, right? Those are purple illusion. Purple illusion salvias. And they are taking root. They're putting on new growth. Irises. Our winter berries did not get berries this year because we had a very late frost that killed their spring flowers. Uh, and our purple pillar, Rose of Sharon, has a flower on it. This is what's amazing about, like, what the deer do. I mean, they just eat the most bizarre things. Like, they'll try anything, I think. Oh, why don't we show them what used to be a mock orange? Yeah, this was a mock orange. I mean, it'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, it'll, it'll be okay. It'll grow next year. It just year. got involuntarily pruned. Um, and they ate some of our spilled wine, which is weird because it's a YGL. I wouldn't have thought they would have eaten that. And then they came through and ate some of our Stacia Vi mm -hmm. and our Sugar Shack. And the Sugar Shack is another amazing fall plant. Eaten There's a, a drift of Sprinter Boxwoods on the edge here. There's some Fox Glove. Fox and Glove Earth that's Angel very Rose. confused. Look at me in the shadow. Yeah, underneath the Prairie, uh, Prairie Fire Crab Apple. This right here is a summer sweet. It is a vanilla spice, spice, vanilla spice summer sweet. This is supposed to be deer resistant. So, so far, so good. So far, so good. Sing Arbor Vitae looking much better than the other one. Mm -hmm. uh, a little hedge of Invincible Lace. Invincible Lace must have been very delicious. So it is what it is. Our Juneberry with Shad Blow. A Drift of Spirea. This is Double Up. Double Play Artisan. Double Play Artisan. And right here is one of my other favorite evergreen specimens. This is our Japanese white pine. Again, if you see your evergreens or your pines shedding this time of year in, in the inside, that's just totally normal. So don't stress about it. But this makes great mulch. Yeah. Our tiny quick fire hydrangeas, which also got nibbled upon. Another Sprinter Boxwood. Christopher, what is this grass? It's so nice. That is a Cheyenne Spirit. Cheyenne Spirit. And again, our Hedge of Invincible. Cheyenne um, Sky. Cheyenne Sky. <laughs> uh, Invincible Lace. And then we have a little grouping of Lemon Jade Seed, in which I transplanted earlier in the season. On this trellis is a Pink Mink. Pink Mink. Pink Mink Clematis. And we have a little miniature bee bomb down there. So that's kind of this side of the garden. I'm loving how it's looking. Christopher, let's go back to the arch and then we'll like bear left and then you can kind of finish this off. Yeah. All right. So over here is another area that's right now very part sun. Eventually it's going to be a little bit more shady once the um, Pagoda Dogwood does a little bit more of its horizontal branching. I think this has not been nibbled. This is little leaf buds. I just wanted to look closer. These are some Virginia here. These are the Miss Piggy Virginia, which I was going to cut back, but I was told by someone um, in the comments that you leave the Virginia up for the year. Um, this is a Dandy Man Color Wheel Rhododendron. That is so perfect looking that I, I just love it. I think this is going to be really, really nice next year. Behind that is a Gatsby pink oak leaf hydrangea doing just as beautiful as the one in the front. Slightly different shape because it's on the small side. Um, this is some ladies mantle down here, which it's almost time to cut that back. 
We've already cut back quite a few perennials in this area. Another of the Winecraft Gold smoke bush, which we're going to try trimming, right? Yeah, we're going to try pruning that one just to kind of experiment. The other one we left unpruned and it is probably 12 feet tall. Yeah. So this and that one, wouldn't work in this location. It wouldn't work in this location. So we're going to try pruning it. If pruning it doesn't work, relocating it will. This is the Ruby Falls Weeping Red Bud. All season long, it's that dark purpley red color. And now it's got a million different fall colors. It's so beautiful. This is done phenomenally well. What does everyone think about staking these? We've got a stake on it right now. Um, obviously, once the leaves fall, it doesn't look very attractive. Do you prefer to keep the stake on or take the stake off after it's had a couple seasons in the ground? I don't know with weeping trees if it's better to leave them on or not. Um, this is the saddest deer damage is, of all for me. Yeah, it's probably better that I'm I know. On this side of the I'll camera. I'll just be silent part. as my tears fall down my yes. cheeks. So sublime hydrangea lime, of course, being the green color of these blooms. It is one of the most beautiful arborescence hydrangeas you'll ever see. And that sublime also goes to taste, apparently. So they came through and they really did a number on this. <laughs> so, um, yeah, the sublime is also, if I'm not mistaken, one of the most or one of the closest hydrangeas Proven Winners has to the native arborescence or hydrangea that grows in North America. So maybe that's the reason that these deer boogers are taken after it. These are Midnight Wine Shine Wygela underneath the fountain. There are just a few Lady of Shalott roses that still smell amazing even though they've been in the fountain just hanging out there i know so that's all right it's, they're beautiful this is going to be incredible next year here's a quick glance at our terrace which we're putting the cushions away so they're all stacked up they're going to go uh in the basement but our fall containers are are fading but still happening they're trying but yeah nothing particularly gorgeous up there right now let's go around the outside and then we'll finish up with one of the nicest looking things in the garden right now. Here are the unfortunate remnants of some beautiful tottering by Gently Roses. Definitely one the um, deer went for. I know, and tottering by Gently is known for its hip production, its rose hip production. So I was really hoping to see, especially because people message me on Instagram about it all the time. How are the rose hips on the tottering by Gently? And I was going to let them know, but yeah. they're delicious. They did, for the most part, leave Let's Dance Skyview alone. These three right here have done quite well. Um, let's see, what else do we got in here? Cutback Perennials. This is Midnight Masquerade Penstemon, which we're hoping, oop, there's a hole, um, fill up a little bit more um, this space and turn into more of a big old mound. Here is one of our new favorite pieces of garden structure, the Titan Tower, Titan Jardin. The Jardin Tower, which we have um, installed for this honeysuckle that threw a bloom out. Wow. We have a bloom on the honeysuckle oh, right here. Oh, new wood, so that must have grown <sighs> since we cut it. Oh, you're right. Yeah. It, it, that was just the honeysuckle telling us it was a great idea. Yeah. Again, we'll link down below for this trellis. It's a must have. We're going to get one for that teasing Georgia we showed you yeah, earlier. Yeah, that's a good idea. Here we have Delina Sonara Solara Grand. Some... <laughs> how many? I don't even know how many times. We look it up all the every time. Single it day. is not a name that flows off the tongue. Delina something Grande. Sonara. S O N O R A, I think. Sonara Grande, I think. You're looking at it right now on the bottom of the screen. I don't know, uh, but they're really pretty. I did run them over with the lawnmower last night by accident. I noticed that. That's okay. I I'm definitely gonna... broke them. <laughs> Once we have our final frost, I will wait two weeks and then I'm going to dig up. I think there's five or six of them in here. And then I need to find a space between 40 and 50 degrees for the winter. And that's where I, we will store them. But I'm, I want to keep these. I think dividing these up will be really nice on one of the oh, there's borders. There's a sleeping bee. Sleeping bee. 
Oh, there's a couple of them. Look at the color on the black gum. Yes, that is something that Tupelo trees are known for. I like this variety. I'm glad we got this one. There's another variety called Wildfire that we originally were on the hunt for, but I think this is going to be even better. The green gable black gum tree. Come on around here. We'll be a little in silhouette for a yeah, second. The sun is rough. It is a rough day for that. Look at this little tater tot doing so well. I, I believe tater tots have also been resize classified. Really? Yeah, they get a little bit bigger. I want to say more like two feet than the one foot they used to be considered. Oh. So we'll see. This would be this is a perfect spot for that. Yeah. Right in here. These are the Steady Eddie Viburnum that have done beautiful. Also, they have not been nibbled. And they are right on the edge, ripe for the picking. Um, the other star of the fall garden is also a star the rest of the year. Midnight Sun Wygela. Really, really, really pretty. Um, these are Snowfire. I know. We got. We Aronia. have to take them out. We're going to have to take they've these out. They've been nothing but eaten for the five months they've been in the garden. They've just... Yeah. So once we put these cages on, the bottom started to grow because the bunnies couldn't get to them. So the deer came and ate the tops off. I mean, they are just wildlife food. <laughs> Reminiscent pink rose here from David Austin. Nope. No, from Proven Winners, my goodness. There are seven of them here. They uh, were nibbled just a little bit. I know, they also got nibbled quite We're just a bit. keeping track, just keeping track of the nibbling. But... The ancient mariner rose is looking pretty good. These grew very nicely this year. They get really powerful canes too. Um, this is our hedge of tough stuff, top fun hydrangeas that have also been left alone. Thank goodness. Fingers crossed. These are so beautiful and they're going to be absolutely incredible next year. I think they're my most excited about hydrangea for next year. Yes. And then this is one of the last annuals that we haven't pulled yet oh, because this it's light. so Sorry, guys. great. Let me just this switch spots. has been so good. Really, really happy about these. This is the Play in the Blues. Mm -hmm. Rock and Play in the Blues. Look, I remember the name. I always get that one mixed up. And then we have one of the prettiest hydrangeas in our whole garden this year. Quick this Fire Fab. Quick Fire Fab in all of its different colors. We've got new, we've got old, we've got pink, we've got dried. Every stage is currently on there. And yes, a little bit yep. of damage on there. Yeah, they got eaten. These are really, really beautiful. Check out that fall foliage. Well, thank you so much for joining us on our October garden tour. We appreciate your patience with the lighting and the wind and the microphone. I really hope you enjoyed it. Uh, again, I'm Eric. And I'm Christopher. And we're Grow For Me 5B. Thanks for growing with us.